part two of the nbgrader tutorial. So now we've installed nbgrader and uh, I want to show you now how to actually create uh, an assignment uh, within nbgrader. So what you're going to do is launch Jupyter Notebooks again. And so we previously launched Jupyter uh, Notebook and installed nbgrader. Then we closed everything and now we've relaunched Jupyter Notebook. Uh, and now we actually have a few extra tabs. Um, so actually we have now a form grader tab, assignments tab, and courses tab. And so uh, I'm the, what you're going to do is basically click on this form grader tab, and that's going to take you to a new window where you can manage your assignments. And one of the management tasks is to actually create uh, assignments. There are some instructions that you can read. Um, they are uh, a little terse but helpful. Um, I'm going to try to go through this somewhat uh, slowly. So um, what you can do, so I've actually already made a handful of assignments. Um, I'm now going to make uh, a new assignment so that you see what happens when, um, when you make a new, a new assignment and, um, and then Following that, I'm going to show you some of the elements of a pre-written assignment as well. So, okay, so add a new assignment. You're just going to click on this plus button, uh, and then you're going to get the option to name your assignment. Uh, I'm going with the convention of PS uh, and the number. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is, as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, you need to have um, folders on your computer with nbgrader NB installed where you're going to be putting the assignments that students submit to you for grading. And those folders should have the same name as the file name associated with that assignment. And in my mind, the best strategy is to pick the simplest name that's unambiguous. Uh, so I'm going to have some number of problem sets. I know that. Um, I can just call them PS1 through PSN, where N is the highest number of problem sets I have. And that way, hopefully, um, I won't make any typos in the folder names. Um, if students change the name of their file that's submitted, I can easily change it to the right name, the PS3, for example, .ipynb. Um, without having to look up what the file name is supposed to be. So I just want to keep it simple. So that's why I'm choosing this naming convention. If you have one that makes sense to you that you think you won't mess up, please use that convention. But uh, do something that you don't think you'll mess up. Due date, you can optionally set the due date. Um, I'm not going to set the due date. You can uh, optionally set the time zone as well. I'm not going to do that. Okay. So now I should have a new assignment called PS3. And if I want to edit the assignment, you would think I should go to this edit, but I don't want to do that. If I click on this edit, it's going to give me the option to change the name, change the due date, and that sort of thing. If I actually want to um, edit the content of the assignment itself, I'm actually going to click on the link with the assignment name, PS3. Okay, and that's going to pull up this new window um, for Jupyter. And what I want to do, I want to make a Jupyter notebook as my assignment. So I'm going to go to new, click on Python 3, and that's going to bring up a new uh, Jupyter notebook with the name untitled. Okay, so that's the first thing that we need to change, right? Because we don't want our assignment file name to be untitled. What do we want it to be? We want it to be PS3. So I'm going to rename it PS3. Okay. Um, so once I've named it PS3, I'm pretty much ready to go uh, creating um, my actual assignment. So um, right now, this looks basically like an ordinary Jupyter notebook. If I want to actually turn it into a NB grader type assignment, I need to go to view, cell toolbar, and then come down to create assignment. Okay, 
So now that I've created the assignment, you'll see that a uh, uh, few things have changed, right? I have now some funny little drop down menu at the top right hand corner of my first cell. I have this thing that says validate. I have this thing that says total points, okay? So these are indicators that I now have successfully created an assignment. And I just wanna show you um, quickly the three features that we will uh, discuss um, in the context of these MB grader assignments. The first is a read-only uh, block, so you can do things like uh, write your instructions here. So you can choose uh, to write in Markdown, for example, and then you can just type regular text. So you know, this assignment uh, deals with a particle in a box which has the energy eigenfunctions. And then you can write equations in Markdown too if you want. Okay, so here's my little um, line of text it, that will be read-only. So this will just be something that the students see. They won't be able to edit it. You can give it uh, 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 an ID that's descriptive if you want. So you might just say, you know, introduction. Okay, so that's one um, kind of cell. And by the way, you, you can have read-only cells which are code as well. So let's just say that you know maybe I want to have a uh, function for the students um, that um, that I I can give um, the students the ability to compute the these energy eigenfunctions, right? So they have to provide a quantum number n, they have to provide the length of the box l, and maybe they have to provide an array of x values. And then, uh, you know, it's just going to basically return this thing. And of course, I would want to do something like import numpy as np so that students uh, would have a read only cell that had this function available to them. And we could name this something as well. Okay. Um, so those are read-only cells. So they can have text, they can have code, they can have equations, right? The students won't edit them, they will just read them. Um, and then you have two other kinds of cells that work with autograder, okay? Um, and there's the autograder answer. Uh, and then there's also the autograder test, okay? And so... Um, the autograder answer is basically where you're going to have students write the code that solves the problem that you want them to solve. Okay, so um, you need to think a little bit about what the learning objective is and what uh, coding activity they could go through to actually meet that learning objective. But then whatever... Uh, 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 code you envision them writing would go into these auto-graded answer cells. Um, and one specific thing that I'll show you um, when we look at a full notebook is you actually have the ability to provide some code for them to start with, maybe a skeleton function, maybe a handful of, of, um, of uh, lines of code that do something that you don't care about testing them on, and then also delineate regions where they need to fill in the code you will still write the complete code that solves the problem that you want, but you will delineate the region where you want them to code and you from the region where you will provide them the code. Okay, so those are the auto-graded answer cells. Those are where students will basically code in their answers. And then finally, the last feature is the auto-grader test cells. And that's where you assign the point value for a particular activity. So an auto grader 
uh, uh, answer will be paired with an auto grader test. And the auto grader test will basically um, check the student's answer and you'll determine uh, a point value for that test. And the way that the auto grader test is going to work is that you're going to have to come up with some representative test cases for the code that they should write and insert some Python code which is going to check those test cases using what are called assert statements. Okay, so that's the basic idea which may sound a little abstract. So in the, in the final um, video, well, I shouldn't say final. There may be two more videos. In the next video, I'm going to walk through an example of a completed um, uh, autograder notebook and show you uh, how, I, how I structured um, the autograder answer and the autograder test.